Hi and welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite flowers which is called Phacelia. I've been growing Phacelia now for the last nine years as a cut flower and it's absolutely fantastic. It's super super easy to grow from seed. It is the most fantastic flower to use in a vase. It's got strong stems, it's got the most unique flowers. I've used it in wedding flowers and jam jar posies and bouquets and I've had lots of people commenting over the years about how unusual it is, how pretty it is. So so it's nice to use something that's a little bit different in your arrangements. And it also has this added bonus that it holds on to nitrogen. So if you dig it into the soil, you can use it as a green manure and that'll put nitrogen into your soil and help condition it for you. So let's go and have a look just now at Phacelia. We're going to look today at how to sow it. We're going to look about how to look after it in the garden. We're going to look at harvesting it, how to use it in flower arranging. But first of all, we're going to talk about why should you bother growing Phacelia in the first place? Let's go and have a look at it just now. So there are so many fantastic reasons why you should grow Phacelia. I absolutely love it just because it's such a beautiful flower as you can see here. So it has these lovely bell-like purpley bluish colored flowers on it and they just whirl over in a little kind of bending spike there that goes round and they're just so unique you don't really ever see them in bouquets usually so they become a bit of a talking point there's something completely different to use in your arrangements and that makes them really really exciting one of the other things that is really lovely about them is they are a really rich source of nectar and pollen and they attract so many beneficial insects to your garden. Bees absolutely love them. If you grow Phacelia, you'll find you'll have lots and lots of bees in your garden. Another reason to grow it is it's just so, so super easy to grow from seed. So it will germinate very quickly for you. Within a week it should do, but it's also very, very quick to flower. So from six to eight weeks from sowing the seed, you can actually be getting flowers and it'll go on flowering for you for another six to eight weeks after that. So really great. So it's one of the first flowers I'll have out from the hardy annuals in May in the garden, which is early for me. So you'll often find that I might have some ranunculus and tulips in a bouquet with some phacelia because it is one of the first of those annuals that has come out to enjoy. Once out in the garden as well, it is not high maintenance. You can pretty much plant it out as long as it's got some support like you can see here, then it will grow away quite happily for you. You don't need to feed it. You don't need to do anything special to it to get it producing lovely flowers for you. Cecilia is a great flower if you live like me in zone 8b in Scotland because it can tolerate a bit of cool weather. So that means that you can plant it as a cool flower in August, September time and overwinter it and it should come through for you um, in most winters and it means that you can get it started early on. You can sow it February, March time and it means that it will also tolerate being planted out in March in the garden. If there was a light frost, Phacelia should be able to come through that outside as long as it was well hardened off and used to it before planting out. So it's great from that point of view as well. Also got that brilliant added bonus of the fact that it holds nitrogen. So it doesn't fix nitrogen, but it holds nitrogen within it. And then if you then add the Phacelia, um, when you cut it down, you can dig it into the soil and it will condition it for you. So that's a great advantage of it as well if you want to grow it as a green manure rather than use it as a cut flower. And then last but not least, Phacelia makes the most amazing cut flower, which is the main reason that I grow it. And it has fantastic, strong, sturdy stems on it, great for arranging, and it lasts really well in a vase too. And not only is it beautiful, but it also has the bonus of a slight, nice, sweet scent to it too, to enjoy in a vase. So we've had a look now at why you should grow Phacelia because it just is a truly fantastic cut flower to grow. But now let's go and have a look at how to grow it from seed. How do we start it off? It's really, really easy and um, you can have flowers within six to eight weeks if you started today. So this is what Phacelia seeds look like next to a five pence coin and they're fairly small as you can see but they're still big enough to handle when sowing which makes it nice and easy. So these little Phacelia seeds here that we're going to grow into little plants and produce great flowers, you might also know as fiddle neck or scorpion flower. Those are some other names for Phacelia you might have come across. 
So Phacelia is super, super easy to grow from seed. The seeds are just large enough to handle, so that makes sowing them quite easy. I have just filled my half seed tray with my seed compost and I have put it in a full seed tray of water to soak up from underneath until it's nice and damp. And then it's ready to get seeds sowing. So let's get our Phacelia seeds over. You can just spread them out lightly on your seed tray, spacing them out. So you can just see them there. Now, Phacelia like to have some darkness to germinate in, so you can cover them. And you can either cover them with some more seed compost or you can cover them with some vermiculite. But so they've got a layer over the top of them and that the seeds will be in darkness. So I'm just going to put some seed compost over there just now. And then I'll press down lightly. I shouldn't need to water the top there because the seed compost is nice and damp that the seeds are pressed into underneath. So what I'll do with that is I will put it on the heated propagating bench with a humidity dome over the top and within five to seven days I would think I'll see some germination there. Facelia is really really quick to germinate. The most important thing that you can do once you've spotted germination is to get those Facelia off that heat mat and the humidity dome off. Grow them on cool in a greenhouse or somewhere where there's maximum light and where it's nice and cool otherwise they're going to get leggy very very quickly. You may not even need any heat, you might not need to put it on a heated propagating bench if the weather is mild and sunny, they'll germinate on their own. It's just if you're starting off early or sowing, as I would say February, March time, that you would maybe need a bit of heat from the heat mat. Now interestingly, you can start Facelia off indoors. You can start it off in August, September time and then over winter your little seedlings or you can start it off February, March indoors as well if you're wanting earlier flowers. But actually, Phacelia probably does best if you direct sow it. And that just gets past all of the leggy seedling stage and the potting on. And it's so quick to germinate that um, you will have seedlings in no time at all outside. So we'll have a look at direct sowing just now. So next week I am going to do a video about direct sowing seeds into the garden and which seeds I do this with and how I do it. So I won't go over too much um, the detail of how I direct sow here but I'll just show you what I am doing with my phacelia today. And I do start with some pre-watering of the furrow that I have made just so that I don't wash my phacelia seeds away. So it's a nice damp furrow that I've made ready for my phacelia to go into. So I'm just going to be sowing some phacelia seeds down here and you can just pop them in, spacing them out as much as you can but don't worry too much if one or two are beside each other. Phacelia don't need very high temperatures to germinate so they'll germinate fairly quickly within five to seven days I would suspect that we'll be seeing some phacelia popping up. I'll check back on them and see how they're getting on. And phacelia like darkness to germinate so you can just cover them over with a little bit of soil. We won't need to water on top of this again because it's nice and moist underneath. There's a bit of a lump there, we'll remove that. So it's just a covering. Then make sure you label as well so that you know where you've planted your facility because we'll be taking this cane out in a minute and using it to make another row further along. After about a week, you'll start to see your phacelia germinating as little seedlings. And at the beginning, it'll just have its seed leaves on it. But when it starts to develop its true leaves and it's a couple of centimeters tall, you can start to thin your phacelia out. So at that stage, you can space them out to about 10 centimeters apart. And then when they are getting bigger still, a couple of weeks later, do it to the final spacing of about 30 centimeters apart. And then you can leave them to it after that. They might need a little watering and dry weather until they get established but you shouldn't need to feed them and they should get away for you really easily. So while we're out here in the garden this is just to show you what an overwintered phacelia seedling looks like. This was planted as a seed directly into the flower beds in August time last year and it put down good roots and this is what it's looking like now at the very beginning of April. So it's just starting to put on some growth. It'll be putting roots down over the winter time and it's been fairly dormant, but it'll suddenly shoot away and the growth will go on really, really quickly now that it's starting to get sunnier and warm up. And these are two Phacelia seedlings that have self-seeded over the winter time and they're gonna need separated out now and have their own spacing about 30 centimeters apart. 
So we have some phacelia there that was sown inside and we had some phacelia that is direct sown in the garden. So if we go back to the ones that were sown inside, once you have got little seedlings in your seed tray, you can pop them on into little pots like this. So these ones have been put into two inch pots initially. And you can see there that they're just starting to get some of their true leaves. You can see the seed leaves at the bottom and then these true leaves coming at the top. They look fern-like in appearance and that's what Phacelia is known for. It's nice ferny foliage that it develops. And these can stay in these little pots for a couple of weeks and then they can get potted on into larger ones. And this is really what you would be doing if you are overwintering your Phacelia inside you may well be able to skip a few steps in terms of potting on several times if you are in the spring and they can get planted out pretty quickly. You might only need to pot them on once and then get them hardened off and outside. But these ones are all ones that have been overwintered and they are looking very nice, ready to get potted on into bigger three inch pots. You can tell when a little seedling is getting ready to get potted on again because you'll start to see roots coming out of the bottom of the pot that it's in at the moment and if that's the case then you need to get it moved on into a bigger sized container for the next stage of growing. So earlier we talked about Phacelia is one of those seedlings that can get very leggy very quickly. It's like sweet peas. If it doesn't get a good enough light source early on then it just reaches for the sky and it can get very weak long stems. And what I've done is last year I produced a video on leggy seedlings and I used Phacelia as an example on that and how to fix that particular problem. So I'll leave a link at the end of this video for that and it's worth a watch if you do get to the leggy seedling stage. But these Phacelia are all looking fantastic. You can see they're a few weeks further on and they're starting to develop more leaves and the stems are looking nice and strong and sturdy. And at this stage, these Phacelia are getting ready to be able to be planted outside. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to get them used to the outdoors by hardening them off like these ones here. So for just 10 days or so, put them outside in the daytime bring them inside at night time, gradually acclimatizing them for a few more hours outside each day until after a week, 10 days, they're ready to get planted outside in the garden. So once you've got your seeds sown and you've got your little seedlings, then you want to plant them outside. So let's go and have a look at what they're looking like in the garden. Once you've got to that stage, do we need to pinch them out? Do we need to support them? What do we need to do to look after them in the garden? What kind of soil do they need? Do I need to feed them? We'll answer all these questions just now. So what do Phacelia need when they are outside in the garden? Well, they're very unfussy plants. Um, you can put them in many different soil types. As long as it's um, free draining and that it's not waterlogged, they should do fine for you. When planting them out, Phacelia do like a nice sunny position. So have a think about where to put them so they'll get lots of sunshine in the day. They do need some support because even though they've got strong stems, I live in a fairly windy exposed area and the wind can snap the stems overnight. So a bit of horizontal support netting is a good idea like you can see here. It is definitely good to get that on early when they're newly planted out before they have grown too big because you'll find it very difficult to put the support netting on at a later stage. Once you've got your Phacelia planted out, they will not require very much. They don't need feeding and um, they will just need a bit of watering and dry spells until they're established, but they should do fairly well for you without needing watering all the time. There isn't any requirement to pinch out Phacelia. They will produce an abundance of flowers without needing to do this. If you want to keep your flowers going all season long, remember to succession sow so that every three weeks or so you're putting on a new batch of seeds. Otherwise, you'll find that they will run out of steam flowering. They'll flower for about six to eight weeks from a plant. Um, so after that, you're going to need new ones to come through. The one thing that Phacelia will do is it will self-seed everywhere, so if you are not using it as a cut flower, you are using it just to enjoy in the garden, be sure to cut the flower stems down when they're finished because otherwise it will start to self-seed maybe in places that you don't want in your garden. If you're growing Phacelia as a green manure and you're not using it for the flowers and harvesting them, then you can cut the Phacelia down at the stage before it's flowered and dig it into the soil then to get the nitrogen into the soil and condition it for you. So if you want to use Phacelia as a cut flower, then you need to know how to harvest it and how to condition it to get the best out of it and the longest fast life. So let's have a look at that just now. 
Harvesting phacelia is very easy. They don't require too much in the way of conditioning. The usual rules apply. So do your flower harvesting in the morning or in the evening after the sun has gone down um, to prevent cutting in the heat of the day. Not quite so important in Scotland, but on those hot, hot days that we do occasionally get in the summertime, it's definitely worth cutting in the cooler parts to your day. And I always take a bucket of clean water to the flower patch with me and cut phacelia directly into this so it's never out of water. It then goes into my old stone garage where it can condition for several hours, ideally overnight. So quite often I will cut my phacelia in the evening in the cool part of the day directly into water and leave it to condition overnight before I flower arrange with it in the following morning. So in terms of stage of the flowers to cut at, this one here is a good example of one that I would cut. So you can see that there is a few flowers out on it, but not all of them. There's still some little buds there that are to come out. If you have a look in the bucket that I've cut here of flowers, you can see that there's lots of phacelia there at the front and you can see that there are flowers out on it, but there are plenty buds as well on the phacelia and these will gradually open up as the days go by in the vase. These are phacelia that I probably wouldn't cut for arranging with because they're just a bit too far gone. So all the flowers are open on them and they've been open for quite a few days as well. And this is another one here where it has flowered for quite a while out in the flower patch and is probably past its peak for harvesting. So here's a little look at some of my flower arrangements. I've used phacelia on everything from my jam jar posies and bouquets through to wedding work and funeral sheaths. And I have always used it as a press flower as well. Phacelia makes a fantastic one um, to dry and to use in that way. So I've used it in press flower cards too. Let's go and have a look at some of the arrangements that I have used phacelia in. So phacelia gets in a lot of my jam jar posies and especially through from late May, June, July, and August, September, it flowers, as long as I remember to succession sow it, then it'll be getting into all my arrangements through all those months, which makes it a really worthwhile flower to grow. And I can use it in bouquets because it's got nice long stems, so it doesn't just have to be in smaller jam jar posies. You can see some Celia tucked in there at the back. Phacelia looks brilliant in purple, blue and white colour schemes like in this jam jar posy here and this is a May jam jar posy because you can see that it's got the raven swing in it, perennial corn flowers and some of the narcissi still flowering there and the bluebells as well so that's definitely a May posy. This one's a later posy, it is now getting into the summertime because it's got the Dorcas and it's got the Canterbury Bells and the cornflowers and stalks in there and it just suits that purple and white colour scheme again. This is a brighter posy with ranunculus and irises in it and aurelia and you can see that phacelia down there on the left hand side. This simple little summer jar has got nigella and cornflowers and aurelia and there's a phacelia on the right hand side of the jar. This is a June arrangement that I've made with the alliums and ranunculus and you can see some phacelia there on the right hand side and there's some tucked in at the back on the left as well. This July posy has ladies mantle, cornflowers, nigella, sweet william in it, some squirrel's tail grass, all sorts of flowers in here and you can see the phacelia on the right hand side and the left hand side here. So this one's got more ranunculus in it. You can see the phacelia down there on the right hand side. So from these different pictures that we've seen so far of my arrangements, you can see that a lot of them are late May, June, July that you're having the flowers, but they are still going in August too if you've succession sowing them. Phacelia can also work with brighter colour flowers. As you can see here, there's a good mix in this jar of flowers with the oranges, pinks, reds, other purples. They are really um, all fitting well together and complementing each other. There's a phacelia there at the bottom that you can see. The phacelia is more subtle in this bouquet because it's being cut more in a bud stage before the flowers have really truly come out. So some of them have come out, but some of them there at the top on the right you can see are just slightly showing their colour um, on the stem. So these are all succession sowings of cornflowers, corn cockles, aurelia and phacelia that have provided flowers in September time. So as long as you put batches on in May, you should still be getting flowers in September. 
and you can see some more here for cilia in a September bouquet. So Celia gets in a lot of my jam jars on the Garden Gate stall, as you can see here, but I also use Phacelia in bouquet orders, but also in funeral work. So it looks really nice and natural in a funeral sheath, as you can see here. The Phacelia is worked into this funeral sheath in several different places. You might be able to spot it there um, on the right hand side. There's some at the beginning and some further up. Cecilia looks so natural in with all these other country garden flowers and is a really nice tribute to someone who may have really loved their garden throughout their life. Facelia works brilliantly in wedding flowers. I've used it for the last nine years in wedding bouquets and it holds up really nicely and is just really unique and different in there. And it works really well with pink and purple, white and blue color schemes. You can see in this bride's bouquet here, the Facelia is on the left hand side there. This bridal bouquet, you can see the Facelia there beside the daisy. This is a bridal bouquet from June and I've worked the Facelia into it in a few different places there. You can see another piece of Facelia there and there and it just complements the white flowers, the white daisies and ranunculus and orlea. In this June bridal bouquet you can see some Facelia there beside the nigella and the hesperus and the hesperus and the Facelia just add that lovely scent as well. So it's important to have scent in bouquets. You can see some astrantia there beside the phacelia and I think that the pink of the astrantia works really well with the purple of the phacelia and again some more ranunculus and early and daisies in there too. The phacelia in this bridal bouquet is more tightly in bud. You can see it down there on the right hand side and it still looks really pretty at this stage. It's just got that nice greenery and you can just see it's a bit fuzzy in the feeling and the texture of that phacelia there. And you can just see the purple where the flower is going to open. As you can see from the bridal bouquets, I use a lot of purple sensation, deeper purple alliums with lighter coloured phacelia that's more lavender, light purple, bluey coloured. And they complement each other very nicely, especially against some other whites like the Hesperus and the Nigella here. Sometimes you want a bridal bouquet to feel like you've just wandered through the most beautiful garden and gathered the most stunning bunch of flowers and this is what this feels like to me and the phacelia there is complemented by all these other beautiful flowers such as astrantia and catmint and daisies and you've got some lovely greenery in there from spirea as well and some ferns and some grasses as well. So you can see that Phacelia really fits well as a wedding flower in a country garden theme where it complements so many other flowers and it really fits with if you've got purples, whites, greens, pinks all together. This September bridal bouquet shows Phacelia still flowering away at its best even towards the end of the season and complemented by cosmos and scabious flowers that are more typical of that time of the year. So we've seen that Phacelia really can be the most beautiful cut flower used in all sorts of arrangements and if succession sown, used in arrangements throughout the whole of the growing season right through from May into September weddings. So fantastic flower that will give you a good week in a vase as well and holds up really nicely in bridal bouquets. So here's a quick recap about this fantastic cut flower. Phacelia is really useful as a cut flower, but it's also a great green manure. So if you're wanting help with conditioning your soil, Phacelia can be really good for this if you dig it in. It is an annual flower and it's also a cool annual flower, so it can tolerate cool temperatures. You can grow it therefore in the autumn time and overwinter it for earlier flowers in May the following year, or you can start it off in early springtime for flowers throughout the summer. Remember to succession sow it if you want continuous flowers through the whole growing season. So every few weeks from March onwards you can start a new batch. You can either start your seeds indoors in autumn time or earlier on in the spring or you can direct sow them when the weather warms up and actually Phacelia do really well from a direct sowing. They 
are really really quick to germinate so within five to seven days you'll see some little seedlings appearing and they do germinate at cooler temperatures as well which is very handy to get them going early in springtime. If you have sown them indoors, because they're very quick to get going, they can get very leggy very quickly. So you need to make sure you take them off any heat source for germination and grow them in cooler conditions and with a good source of light. So if you've overwintered them indoors or if you've started them off in February, early March time, you can start hardening them off in late March and get them planted outside. They will tolerate a little bit of cool temperatures, so should be okay outside in early springtime and make sure that you have about 30 centimeters spacing between the plants as a final spacing. And they should flower within six to eight weeks from sowing your seeds, so really, really quick to get flowers there. And the flowers will keep going for a further six to eight weeks. Although they've got really good strong stems, I live in a really exposed windy place, so I provide horizontal support netting just as an extra support to the stems and that stops them from breaking in the wind. When harvesting as a cut flower, I tend to cut the flowers when a few are out on a stem, but not the whole lot, so you can still see some coloured buds as well. And I cut early in the day or in the evening straight into clean buckets of water and condition for several hours or overnight. They don't need any other special treatment from that and their vase life will be about five to seven days. And just to remember that Phacelia is a self-seeder, it will spread all over your garden given half the chance. So if you want to control where it is flowering, then remember to remove any spent flower heads. Thanks so much for watching today's video all about Phacelia. I hope you now like it as much as I do as a cut flower and are going to go and give it a go this year and try it for yourselves because it's so easy. You can have flowers in literally six to eight weeks time from now if you put some seeds on to sow today. It's that fantastic. If you are using it and you want to have flowers continuously throughout the season, remember just to put a new batch on every few weeks so it'll take you right through to September time. And then if you want to try and overwinter it next year then put some seeds on when you get to about August September time and you can try and overwinter them as well and remember that if you have tried sowing them inside then they can get a bit leggy and if yours are looking a bit like that there's going to be a link at the end of the video just now on leggy seedlings and what to do with them because you can rescue the Phacelia seedlings if they have got to that stage and I'll show you how to do that in the video. I hope you're enjoying this mini series I'm doing just now on individual cut flowers, looking at them in a bit more detail. There will be more to come in the coming weeks and months as I do more filming of the flowers, especially as they get going in the flower patch again. And we're going to be having a look in the next several weeks at the flowers that are coming out. I'm going to be having a look at direct sowing as well. And we're going to be back in the greenhouse. We're going to be looking at the tulips. I can see buds on them now as well. So that's getting exciting. So please do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and that will just keep you up to date with when the new videos are coming out and what is happening here at Cloudberry Flowers. See you soon.